Forbes just released an article titled Physician Licensing Exams Failure or Success. Let's dive in. In case you're wondering, this is Dark Roasted Dong Ding from Tea and Whisk, my favorite tea shop and use this coupon code to get a custom discount on your next order. All right, so first paragraph, they're explaining USMLE has step one, step two, and step three. You do step one and two in med school, you do step three in residency. As of January 26th of this year, step one has become pass fail. It used to be numerical scoring. Second paragraph, the reason for the change, according to Dr. Kevin Jabal, a plastic surgeon and founder of Med School Insiders, the change occurred to improve the well being of medical students and decrease the stress and anxiety of students surrounding the exam. A couple things here. Number one, I never spoke to Forbes, and I'm guessing they quoted this from a video, which was the supposed reason as to why it went pass fail. Secondly, um, I'm not a plastic surgeon. I'm a plastic surgery residency dropout. At one point, I was a resident surgeon in plastic surgery. And thirdly, this is the reason I'm reacting to this article because an old friend from med school sent this to me. And yeah, according to a lot of program director surveys, step one was pretty high on the list in terms of priority. So if you wanted to go into certain specialties or just really competitive programs in less competitive specialties, step one was very much the single most important objective metric. There are other subjective metrics like letters of recommendation that are extremely important, of course, especially in smaller specialties. But yeah, step one was the end all be all. And that's why a lot of people really stressed about it. All right. Yeah. So as we predicted from the get go from that first video I made on this channel years ago, before the, the change actually went into effect, step two CK has essentially just become the new step one. So it hasn't really reduced stress, it's just shifted the stress over from step one to now step two CK because step two CK now holds the importance that step one used to have. But that being said, some would say it's more appropriate because step two CK is more clinical than step one. And therefore step two CK is a little bit more representative of what you're gonna be seeing in residency versus step one. 50% of med students are experiencing burnout. That's a number we've heard a lot, right? And this epidemic of burnout, depression, and suicide amongst medical trainees, namely medical students and residents, it's really a problem. And I don't think that step one going pass fail has really addressed that issue much at all. I think it's more just paying lip service to the issue rather than actually getting to the root cause. All right, now getting into racial and ethnic disparities. So they're talking about how black and Latino medical students are more likely to score lower and or fail all three USMLE exams compared to white students. Now this is a tricky situation whenever we discuss racial and ethnic disparities. Um, and the one thing that I have discussed before on the Med School Insider channel is Asian students, right? South Asian, East Asian, Pacific Islander. A lot of Asian students perform well, yet they're also subject to racism, right? And sometimes things like affirmative action actually work against them in the sense that Asian students need to perform higher with regards to MCAT and GPA just to get into med school compared to even white students. Now, obviously the disparities with black and Latino students, these underrepresented minorities in medicine because Asians are overrepresented minorities, but with underrepresented minorities, there are obviously some systemic issues that are at play. And of course, more work needs to be done there. With regards to USMLE, one of the stronger predictors of USMLE score is actually MCAT score. So if you look at the average black, Hispanic, Asian, and white student in terms of averages of MCAT and GPA, before med school, you can see trends with USMLE scores as well. Anytime we discuss things like affirmative action or racial and ethnic disparities, it's always a very touchy subject. So um, requires a lot of nuance. And I would say that while ethnicity is an important part, I think socioeconomic background is also a really important part that doesn't get enough attention. All right, so now the author is suggesting that removing scores, the numeric scores from all USMLE steps from one through three would make for a more holistic review of prospective candidates. But I think a lot of this is wishful thinking because the issue, the root cause is that it's very competitive to get into certain specialties. There's a certain number of seats and a certain number of students that want to get in. When a program director is looking at all the different applicants, they can't thoroughly look through each and every applicant. They need to have certain objective metrics to narrow it down when they have a stack this big to get it down to, okay, rather than looking at a thousand people, let me look at 200. And from those 200, let me choose just a couple, right? So I think a lot of this is very short-sighted to suggest everything go pass fail. So then you need to think, okay, if you make all the USMLE pass fail, then what's gonna happen to, is research gonna become the new game? Is it gonna be letters of recommendation? Is it gonna be the clinical grades? Where does that emphasis get placed instead? It's not a matter of you reduce USMLE scoring and then boom, problem solved. You're just kicking the can down the road and something else is gonna become the next thing to really optimize and strive for. It looks like University of Maryland uh, for their med school 
They have some holistic screening, de-emphasizing standardized test scores. They offer unconscious bias training for interviewers and blind interviewers to standardized scores, um, which I think are nice things. They're a step in the right direction. But again, when things are competitive, the system gets gained. And if you de-emphasize things like scores, then is it relationships? Is it just interview skills? Is it letters of recommendation? Is it nepotism? Who you know? Something else is gonna get gamed instead. Now, as you guys know, I do care a lot about med student and resident well-being, the mental health, the burnout epidemic, uh, depression, all those things, because of a lot of things that we've just seen, a lot of myself and a lot of medical trainees have seen throughout our training process. And I wanna see positive changes there, but I don't think that making everything pass fail is the answer. You're addressing the symptom, not the root cause. And it's like the sexy thing to say because you know, you get to talk about the racial and ethnic disparities, but even then you need to talk, you need to look at all these things with a through a lens of nuance. I know I say nuance a lot, but these are really delicate subjects and just using a sledgehammer and saying, all right, pass fail for everything. That's not the answer either. I think one thing a lot of people mix up is the idea of equal opportunity versus equal outcome. Equal opportunity is good. Equal outcome is bad. What's important to remember is that no system is going to be perfect. So. Being a doctor takes a whole set of skills, right? A whole suite of skills from the content, the critical thinking, the understanding, to the social, the social interactions, people skills, et cetera, and everything between. And no system you design is going to be 100% perfect and always decide who's gonna be the best possible doctor, who deserves it the most, et cetera. So if one system is too numbers focused, then you get people who have really good critical thinking or test taking skills, they know the content really well, but then they lack on the social aspect, right? They, they don't have the people skills. <laughs> Ew. Takes one to no one, loser. And that was definitely an issue several decades ago. Now, if you reduce or remove the test taking part, the numeric scoring, the content, critical thinking, etc., and make it just pass fail, I mean, I personally think the pass lane is a pretty low bar, but you make it all just, you know, people skills, the social interaction, the research, the who you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then you're not actually necessarily getting the best people either. So it needs to be a blend of the two. Each system is gonna have its strengths and weaknesses. In fact, I would argue that if you focus too much on just the side of who you know and letters of recommendation, all that stuff, you start getting a lot of politics involved. And even on some rotations, there, there are some politics already as is. Anyways, that's just my thoughts. I wanna hear what you guys think down in the comments. Should step two and step three be pass fail as well? If you enjoyed this video, then you may enjoy this one or that one. Much love my friends, and I'll see you guys in that next one.